Hi everyone, once again. Thanks for staying there. Um, well, I'm going to start my second presentation, which is about up and down scaling flux measurements to UAV, aircraft, and spaceborne sensors. The title says flux, but sorry. Um, I will present some flux data in cases where we have this data available, but I will also open the, the topic uh, um, in the frame of the chlorophyll fluorescence down at upscaling, for example, which is within this uh, spectroscopy of vegetation issue. And uh, one thing that I did not mention in the last talk was that um, I tried to leave in the slides the main ideas <clears throat> of, the, of each slide. I, I tried to leave it in short texts so you can use these presentations afterwards for, for, to consult concepts and so on. Then you also have, as I said before, the, the links of the references I mentioned. So I hope this material may help, can help you in the future. Um, okay, let's just start with the second talk then about up and down scaling. Just uh, a glance of what I'm going to talk about. At the beginning, I will give you some introductory uh, aspects and concepts about the scaling itself and uh, within the, the, the CIF remote sensing. Then uh, I will give you about the upscaling um, part. I will give you example of the studies, what they did and why they did. And uh, also some uh, principles of how they did. But I will not come into details because uh, there you will have uh, the references in case you want to know <clears throat> more details about, about their approaches. And then uh, for the downscaling part, I will present it in two different perspectives. The first one uh, from the perspective of downscaling as getting closer to the actual leaf level values of plant traits. Again, in, in the case of, of my research area, um, the actual values of fluorescence. And then I will give the downscaling um, issue from the perspective of increasing the resolution of course imagery. And at the end, we will summarize uh, some concepts. So now let me introduce you some <clears throat> initial concepts about the scaling. Well, scale, first of all, uh, what is a scale? A scale is nothing but the relation between a real value, original real value of something this something in our case is a remote sensing variable. Um, again, in my case here, the relation about the original value of this X uh, remote sensing parameter and its value on a map, a model, or a diagram. And then what is the scaling? The scaling is a process. Scaling is the process to convert the original value measured at a certain spatial temporal scale to a finer or closer one. If we convert the original value to a finer scale, we are talking about down scaling. If we convert the original value to a closer scale, we are talking about up scaling. And then uh, the most of the examples I, I'm going to give you are about up and down scaling hyperspectral data of, of well, uh, the sun induced chlorophyll fluorescence data which from now on I will mention as SIF. Well, this is um, light, a tiny or low intensity red light that is emitted from the core of the photosynthetic apparatus in two frequencies, um, which are the oxygen absorption bands, uh, uh, the regions of the oxygen absorption bands that I showed before. And, as I said, replying to one question in the last talk, it is a direct indicator of photosynthetic rates. And that's why it is of, of a interest of many researchers currently in the remote sensing of vegetation area. So uh, just to explain you a little bit uh, in more detail, 
from the incoming light from the sun to the vegetation, some of it is reflected, as we saw in the last talk, some of it is transmitted, and some other portion is absorbed by the vegetation. From this uh, absorbed light by vegetation, a part is uh, used for photosynthesis, which is also known as, as photochemical tension in this, in this research area. Some other part of the already absorbed energy is dissipated at, as heat. And uh, a third part, or well, an <clears throat> another part of this absorbed uh, light is re-emitted as fluorescence, uh, which is again a uh, low intensity red signal. How to measure see if, well, um, as I said before, there are uh, several instruments that can help you to retrieve SIF, even point or imaging spectrometers. Here I am presenting and mentioning the, the flux from JB hyperspectral that I think Tommaso will talk in a bit more detail in the afternoon. And um, uh, yeah, the image on the right is myself holding what we call, well, a prototype of a mobile flux system. And yes, I was holding my breath. <laughs> well, um, then coming again to the up and down scaling issue. Uh, when to do it? When to upscale? When to downscale um, remote sensing data, hyperspectral remote sensing data? Well, it will really depend on, on the research goal. There, there is not a rule to say when you should go for one or the other approach. It is generally desired, generally, I mean, uh, desired uh, or understood that uh, the better way would be to go for downscale data. Because in principle, it takes us from our original estimation uh, to information closer to, a, uh, to the real value, you know? Uh, I mean, in principle, the downscaling approaches take us from lower amount of information to higher amount of information. But it is not always the case. Um, researchers have found value in the upscaled um, approaches as well. For example, in the temporal domain, if you upscale variables in the temporal domain, it means from sh short periods of time to larger periods of time, then you will uh, you can have better agreement between two or more variables as i am going to show uh, first in in some upscaling cases the first case is um, well a study when uh, where the authors started from the statement that the temporal mismatch, as I, will say, as I was saying before, between two variables, in this case, CIF and gross primary productivity, GPP, impact has an impact in their relation across the spatial temporal scales. So the authors, and you will have there the, the reference and, and the link if you want more details, use the ratio between a daily instantaneous and daily photosynthetically active radiation which I will call from now on PAR. They use it as a correction factor to upscale um, instantaneous, uh, let's say in the minutes uh, scale SIF data to daily scale SIF data. By doing it, uh, they improved the relation between these two variables of SIF and GPP, for instance. Um, a similar approach, but all the way around. Um, in another study, again, you will have the link. Um, these authors, what did was to upscale the GPP information uh, to get a better match with the satellite level uh, SIF data. And uh, they, they explored the same concept that upscaling data in the temporal domain will give you or can give you better agreements between variables, better, better understandings of, of the systems that you are studying. Just a couple of more examples about uh, why upscaling is, is, it has worked well. 
for example, uh, using this uh, 2017 study, where, well, they started from a statement that the relation between SIF and photosynthesis that has been mentioned even in the questions of the last talk, uh, the link between these two uh, processes or variables uh, behaves differently if we are looking at the leaf level or the field levels due to the influence of kind of the structure at the large scales, okay? So from this statement, um, the authors propose it an algorithm based on, well, radiative transfer models, specifically the DART. There is a full topic behind these models and the and object, object models, uh, in this case, one called Blender, which is the image you can see on the left-hand side. And, um, well, joining these two models in, into one algorithm, they manage it to, to understand or to better comprehend the effects of canopy structures and, and um, in forests specifically, the influence of this variable in the link between SIF and photosynthesis. Uh, this is another example of when uh, and why upscaling can also be a, a good goal for to go with research. You will have more details about how they uh, built these algorithms in the in the paper. And finally, the last example of upscaling cases. Well, this is a 2020 study, a more recent one. They, um, the authors, upscaled leaf level fluorescence to canopy level information. They did it by averaging the information of, uh, dividing the information of the variable into two big groups, which were the sunlit and the shadowed leaves. And in that way, they managed to simplify um, the understanding of the fluorescence transfer physics. And therefore, they also they could simplify the simulation of some of some models. So in this case, the upscaling um, approach it was very helpful to make the computation of models easier. And yeah, the image on the left is just uh, to mention that in this very specific case, this very specific study, the authors uh, found different results according to the leaf area index. So should be a, a, there is always a, a, a cares that you have to take when you want to use an, an existing approach. Again, this is just to show you how, how and when this upscaling could be the goal of, of an investigation. Now let me pass to the other part, to the downscaling cases. Uh, in this part, I will show mostly, not all of them, but mostly uh, works that we have done here in the Julich Fortune Centrum. And I will divide these downscaling cases into two parts. First, um, looking at the downscaling um, uh, from the perspective of getting closer to leaf level values. And first of all, I have to mention or you have to be clear that, again, the fluorescence information comes from, a, from the chlorophyll fluorescence light, which is low intensity emission, okay? Even from the total, I mean, the total fluorescence, chlorophyll fluorescence emitted by a plant is less than 5%, more or less less than 5% of the reflected light in the, in the near infrared spectrum, just for you to have an idea how low intensity it is. And then the total sieve emitted in a leaf is, uh, can be reabsorbed by the plant. Therefore, the, um, the sieve or the chlorophyll fluorescence that is escaping from the leaf that is not reabs reabsorbed then leaves the leaf, but it can also be scattered in the canopy. And uh, after these two reabsorption and scattering processes, then the real uh, sieve signal that is reaching the sensor is very low. And that's why uh, in this specific case of sieve, uh, it is worth it to go for downscaling approaches 
accounting for the scattering and reabsorption effects and bringing the, the canopy level, for example, to leaf level information of sieve. This is another slide just to show you again um, how the small signal gets even smaller as, as it leaves the vegetation. Even uh, from th this example is um, or shows you this effect uh, starting from the chlorophyll molecule level up to the sensor or ecosystem level. Okay, so it is a very low intensity red light. Now, how to downscale it? And um, the concepts, the main concepts I'm going to mention, um, you can um, also think about their application to other remote sensing variables uh, if it is your interest. And of course, we can keep in communication after the presentations. So the first approach for downscaling SIF that I'm going to present is based on the fluorescence correction vegetation index, also called FCBI, which was recently proposed by, by a young guy. He's, I think, from the Netherlands, if I'm not wrong. So the FCBI itself is nothing but the subtraction of the, um, of the reflectance in the visible spectrum from the reflectance in the NIR, in the near infrared. Uh, how this accounts for uh, the scattering and, and absorption effects? Well, it is based on a theory, so-called the spectral invariant radiative transfer, which is a, a common point between several downscaling approaches. It is a full topic uh, that could be presented in several talks, but for now I will just mention that uh, with this theory, um, you can parameterize canopy uh, characteristics like the scattering, absorption, reflectance by using a spectrally invariant parameters like the canopy interceptance and so-called recollision and escape probabilities. I will mention a little bit more about escape probabilities afterwards. But just have in mind for now that uh, if you want to go for a downscaling approach, well, uh, this is a theory that is a common denominator between several methods that are being developed. You will have, again, the references if you want more detail. So uh, to keep with the downscaling process, then once you have the FCDI, um, which is, by the way, uh, computed with hyperspectral data, not multispectral one. If you divide it by the um, fraction of the absorbed part by the chlorophyll molecules, you will have an approximation of the fluorescence state probability, which uh, basically describe how, in the case of the sieve, this low intensity red signal is scattered in the, in the canopy. And it corresponds to the, yeah, to the ratio between the apparent sieve at the canopy level and the, and the sieve signal at the leaf level. Why so? Okay, again, there is, a, okay, I, a, we should a, need hours to talk about this, but just keep in mind for the downscaling approach, if you have the FCBI, then you divide it into the far part of chlorophyll floor chlorophyll molecules, you will have an approximation of the fluorescence escape probability. And then uh, as a denominator and put it in a mathematical expression with the sieve at canopy level above, you will have a finally with this equation a sieve signal converted to the leaf level and which is, by the way, I could link for my next talk because uh, in the next talk, I use it uh, downscale at SIF data with this approach exactly, but I haven't finished this one so far. And this slide, I just want to show you um, an example of how the SIF at the canopy level looks like and how the downscale at SIF at the leaf level looks like. Some, um, changes in the heterogeneity of the vegetation 
in the intrafield heterogeneity of vegetation can be seen there. Uh, and this is just one example of a study recently published by a colleague of mine. He downscaled SIP data from several canopy architectures in a region here in Germany, close to Julich. And well, he could reproduce a nice diurnal course of SIF by downscaling the SIF information. And also found some other um, concepts, like for example, that you need this escape probability, only one escape probability per day to correct data of or, or to downscale data of simpler canopies like wheat. Whereas if you have com more complex structures like fruit trees, you will require at least one escape probability value uh, for each observation. But this is just a practical example of how this downscaling approach of the SIF signal was applied. Again, you will have the, the link for the study. Another example uh, is a, a, a research done a couple of years ago by authors that use it. As I told you, the, the same theory, spectral invariant, which is common denominator between some of these approaches, they use this theory to analyze the kind of scheduling effects. Similarly, as the last study did, and um, they found that by doing this, by applying this approach, um, they they could set a, or or they could a, set yeah a, a efficient strategy for normalization for normalization of the effects uh, of this, uh, according to the species, the canopy structure and the sol solar angle dependencies. So again, by downscaling the SIP data to the canopy level, to the leaf level, using a similar approach based on the same theory, the authors um, informed that this can be a good strategy. If you want to normalize the effects of a species, I think it related to one of the questions in the last talk. Also the effects for the canopy structure and uh, the effects of the solar angle as well. Uh, more details, of course, uh, can be and have to be uh, consulted in the specific reference. And um, the authors at the end said but that um, using this approach, well, they could improve estimates of photosynthesis. Since they were getting, they converted the original SIF information to information closer to the actual one or on the leaf. And this is just an example of how the downscaled uh, SIF information maps looks like at the leaf and the, and the um, photosystem level. Now, uh, from the second perspective of the downscaling approaches, which is about increasing the spatial resolution of course imagery. Well, if why we want this kind of approach as well, because the data uh, retrieved or measured from aerial platforms does not match perfectly with the one we have on ground. These are just two examples of SIF data collected from, the, from an UAV on the left-hand side and from uh, airborne on the right hand on the right hand side and how they relate with the real sieve on the ground uh, is not perfect of course and in the case of the uav the difference is mainly because of the of issues with the characterization of the footprint but then okay we want to bring this kind of data, or for example, the, the airborne data on the right hand side to a more accurate value compared with the ground level information. And it is done generally uh, or often with explanatory variables, um, variables that can, that are related to your target variable, in my case, SIP. Uh, and in my specific case, those variables can be land surface temperature, 
uh, vegetation indices, if it applies, evapotranspiration as well. And those explanatory variables you can use independently or you can combine them into mathematical expressions to get a proxy of the variable that you want to downscale. Again, in my case, it is fluorescence. You can, um, now how to do it? There are numerous approaches. I cannot mention one, which is the main one, but they will vary, um, they will vary depending on the general frame of the remote sensing. For example, you have geostatistical approaches, machine learning based ones, a linear and non-linear um, points of view of how to downscale the information. So you will have uh, many of these approaches. One example that I will mention is a, a study that I am working on. This is not yet an approach, but just some thoughts around that we have about using the fractal geometry to downscale seed data. Uh, our, well, in principle, what we think is that if we have explanatory variables of SIF, and if we can prove the, um, that uh, the vegetation objects distribution and geometry have a power law distribution, which is this kind of, of green function I'm, I'm showing there. If they show this kind of distribution at a certain scale, for example, it means that they uh, present fractal geometry. If this is true, if it happens, then we could use the equation of this kind of, of distributions to especially disentangle the, the SIF information from one coarse pixel into the total SIF of the individual polygons that are on its footprint. So this is an, an example of how you can address these higher spatial resolution approaches of, of um, by downscaling coarse, coarse products. And yeah, just to clarify, here we, with this approach, as an example, we don't want to create a higher resolution image in the sense of, of lower pixel sizes. We just want to create a, a, a thematic map where each vegetation object, in the case of agriculture, each agricultural field has its own uh, fluorescence value. I think it will be enough to help the agricultural sector to monitor its fields. Okay. And yeah, well, this is a, a huge topic, as I said before. And just to summarize, well, across the presentation, we talked about um, the main concepts at the beginning, like what is the scale? what is a scaling, which is the process itself, what is downscaling and upscaling. Uh, downscaling is bringing original value, original information to a finer resolution or finer scale. And coarser one is the opposite process. We saw when uh, and more or less how the upscaling approaches can be um, used. And also, well, we provided some, some principles of the theories used from downscaling approaches and, and some practical examples as well. And um, yeah, and which approach to use, when to use, well, just have clear your research goal and you will design, you will decide which is the best one for you. And also, uh, yeah, be aware that this is an open research area and uh, we are open for new approaches. I say we because I'm also dealing with, with, with these kind of issues for my PhD studies, but yeah, if you have ideas, if you are motivated to work on this uh, downscaling, upscaling area, yeah, you are more than welcome. And of course you will have the references and the links. Thank you.